All right, hello everyone. This is Dylan with Pomsky. And this is our first, well, really first donation and our doxing event. So <laughs> here we go. Jonathan. Yeah, so pretty much want to be able to welcome both the Muttville team over at San Francisco with the senior dog rescue. We both have Sherry as well as Eric joining us today. And I see that Sherry has her little pup with her as well. And then another good welcome is Zach, who's going to be leading this or hosting it for us. And he's going to be walking through the different questions that we have about Mudville. And then he's also going to be asking a couple questions about us at the Pomsky team. So I want to give a good welcome to everybody. And thank you for taking this time to be on a call with us. Thanks for thank having you. us. Yeah, we're yeah, thrilled to be here. Thank me. you. And thank you all for joining our call. <laughs> <laughs> all right, a little bit about yourself, John. Yeah, so pretty much a little bit about me. I've been in crypto for probably the past nine or so years. Been through a couple of the different ups and down cycles as well as seeing it just continue getting built out more and more every single day. New projects coming out left and right. And then how much joined with me today is little Luna. She is about a little over two years old now and she's a husky Pomeranian. So I see over there. Hello. She's beautiful. What a face. Yep. And I'm Dylan. I've been in crypto for about three years or so. And I was in a trading group also at the same time. Played with stocks, options, crypto at all times. And it's been great. But I've taken a real liking to crypto and the just the chance to actually help out other communities and like uh, Muttville, being able to give them give back to the community and just help someone you know it's not just okay greed and I'm going to make all this money no I want to give back and help everyone I can to be honest and that's what one reason why I wanted to make this coin also I used to be a, a fire suppression um, pipe fitter but I quit that to fully involve myself into this project. So now I'm helping y'all and I'm going to be able to help so many other people. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, Zach, how are you doing, bud? I'm doing good. <laughs> so uh, for me, I... I actually just got into crypto. It's probably been about three, four weeks now, and I kind of jumped in head first, kind of uh, right off of Twitter and started researching all these coins, made a lot of bad investments from FOMO, and and then now I'm at the point where I kind of feel like I figure out what's, what's going on a little bit. So it's kind of cool to partner up with some great coins like yourself, and, and uh, yeah, just happy to be here. Yes, sir. And what made y'all uh, choose crypto to accept the donations, Mava? Oh, well, from our perspective, uh, you know, it was a little bit of the FOMO as well. We're here in San Francisco, and it's uh, always been kind of the birthplace of innovation and creativity. And we're seeing so much excitement and the crypto community, so many, uh, so much growth and opportunity. And it just seemed like we should. Uh, you know, take advantage of this. Anything we can do that allows us to save more dogs is just really right in our wheelhouse. So, uh, you know, Muckville's always been about innovation. Crypto seems like it is on the cutting edge and we're the first uh, uh, page free shelter. We first uh, uh, shelter to focus on senior dogs. So why not cryptocurrency? So uh, that, that was exactly it for us. And, you know, we're seeing more and more merchants in the Bay Area accepting cryptocurrency from some of the professional sports teams here. So it's like, why not dog rescue? So sign us up. All right. That's awesome. 
And we appreciate it so much because every time you donate, you're saving lives. So, you know, it's got to be a feel good uh, all the way around, right? Yes, ma'am. The dogs that's... or the humans. Yes, ma'am. And that's yeah, what I fact, did. In fact, you see uh, Sherry's dog and my dog, these are both Muttville alumni. You'd never know it. They're old timers and they're happy as can be. And they're just loving their second chapters of their life. Everything we can do to make it possible, it's a good thing. Right. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> do everything we can help. Thank you. Thank you so much, really. <laughs> like this little girl, this, this is Misha. And uh, we had a vet clinic call us um, on, a, on a Saturday and say, you know, somebody brought this dog in for euthanasia. But we don't think she's. It's her time to to uh, to die. So would you take her? And I'm like, just bring her on down. So they brought her on down, and you know what? I fell in love with her. So I actually adopted her myself. But you know, had we not been here, they wouldn't have had anybody to call. So you know, euthanasia for these old dogs is sometimes used to be the only answer. You know, so we're so happy we can help. And with, you know, we need people like you guys to help support us in, in helping and saving lives. Yeah, it's really critical, like, to have uh, just the community come forward to help support us. We don't get any money from the government. We, we, there's just a handful of foundations that are able to support animal rescue. So, like, you know, 80, 90 percent of our revenue, our, our donations come from individuals. So the crypto community is huge to make this possible. So it really makes a difference. And that's awesome. That's awesome. Do y'all have uh, Do y'all have any questions for us? So many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to ask them. How, how do you get? How does one get involved with cryptocurrency? How How do you start? Where do you start? And well, you, you need to find find a good broker for one. <laughs> <laughs> one that's accepted and uh well it's just like trading stocks really i mean you've heard of apple tesla and everything else like that of course once you find your broker you're able to go from there and be like okay you research the project and see what's going on with that project and then you either decide to buy it or not but with crypto you're not able to actually sell something you don't own, unlike stocks. So that's one reason why crypto is a lot better, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like it a lot better. And it's um, easy to donate, right? I mean, it's a great way to donate. And, and uh, you know, we're, all, of our, all of these wonderful organizations and nonprofits like Muttville, we need donations and crypto has been really working out for us because a lot of organizations aren't set up to accept crypto and we are. So um, we really appreciate that. Yeah, in fact, we've been a real early, I mean, not, we recently came to the crypto party, let's just say that. So uh, we dabbled in it a couple of years ago, but we just didn't have the infrastructure to support accepting cryptocurrency donations. So uh, we uh, started a partnership with another organization back in December. And since that time, it's really kind of taken off because they've made it turnkey for us to accept cryptocurrency donations. So since that time, since like the middle of December, we've had about 14 cryptocurrency uh, donations. And I think yours is the 15th. So thank you so much. Oh, 15 <laughs> for momentum is building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works out perfectly, don't it? <laughs> Yeah, pretty, pretty exciting stuff right there. You know, Sherry, I want to be able to expand on that a little bit more and then figure out why did you start the Senior Dog Rescue and what was your inspiration for the whole charity? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I was volunteering walking dogs at, at a local animal shelter and um, I fell in love with this one dog and I was really new. And um, I started going in, I was supposed to go in once a week walk the dogs, but I started going in almost every day to walk this one dog. I really liked her a lot. Um, and one day she wasn't there anymore. And I thought, oh, great. She got adopted. I'm so happy because she was, she kept getting looked over for adoption for, you know, a couple of weeks. 
And they said, no, she didn't get adopted. She was euthanized. And I'm like, oh, I, I was so shocked. And I said, well, why? She was such a perfect dog. She was like a beagle, basset, really cute, waggy dog. And they said, well, you know, she's old and they just don't get adopted. And it was like so eye-opening for me that it was, it was that day. And I was like, I, I have to do something about it. And, and it took a little bit longer to actually start doing it and, and set up a, a nonprofit and really start doing it on a larger scale. But I started taking dogs home one at a time, old dogs, and finding them homes. And then I started the nonprofit. And then it was, it just took off. I mean, people really were touched by the mission that we have, you know, to save these old dogs. And because look at them, they're so perfect and, and they're so easy. You know, you've got a two-year-old, that's like a toddler. They're like crazy and they take a lot of energy. But if you bring home like a nine-year-old dog, it lays in your lap like this and it just brings so much joy and love to you. But it also makes me feel really good because I got to save an old dog. So, um, because we started Muttville in 2007, uh, we have saved 9,000 senior dogs since then. So, and placed them in loving homes. And since we started, we were the first to really start a, a, a senior dog rescue. Um, since then, there's all these people that have started adopting senior dogs. And I like to say that Muttville made senior dogs sexy. So like people want to adopt senior dogs now because it's so cool. So um, it was a labor of love and it was out of passion for these, these old souls that, that I just, it was an unstoppable train for me to just jump on and ride. That's pretty really weird. That was like the whole backstory behind it and figuring out like, what was the the smallest little thing is just taking home that dog or taking them for walks and then just seeing how it's been able to expand over time and keep on growing and it's amazing yeah. to hear that you've been able to take care of nine thousand different dogs yeah it's i th i think that you know we all look for what's needed not we all do but a lot of us do we look for a hole and what's needed in whatever area we're working in and yours might have been crypto and how to donate crypto because that was sort of a new world before people were uh, buying crypto and investing in crypto. I think that's what we call it. I'm not sure. Uh, but um, they weren't donating crypto. And so, you know, you guys found something that wasn't happening that you could offer as a service. And that's like my fill. We, I found something that was not, you know, there was nobody rescuing these old dogs and, 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 you know, took it to the next level. And now dogs all over the country, old dogs all over the country are being rescued. So um, we both, you know, it's innovative on every end, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So how would you say that being able to accept crypto has been able to improve the shelter and be able to impact your guys' mission? Well, I'll let uh, Eric answer that. But it, it well, has been hugely impactful. Yeah, and I'll tell you, um, it's really uh, introduced a whole new audience to us. So it's, you know, we are based in San Francisco and we have um, people that follow us and support us, you know, all throughout the country, but uh, primarily a lot of our financial supports comes locally in the Northern California region. But once you're talking about cryptocurrency, it opens up the whole world to you. So it's really exciting to see folks from all over the country, all over the world, uh, world learn about our mission and it's so universal like and so unobjectionable why wouldn't you want to save a beautiful loving dog like you know banjo <laughs> or misha it's like why wouldn't you want to do that and uh it's just so nice to be able to um share this message with people and give them a vehicle where they can support it and crypto is such a great um way to do that and especially if there has been like a uh, growth that they've seen and the tokens the value of their tokens you know, a lot of these people are facing capital gains if they want to cash out and, and, and enjoy some of the uh, growth they've seen. But like, so why not donate some of that to a nonprofit and kind of have like a little bit of a win-win. 
So, uh, you know, that's uh, been probably the most exciting part for us about this relationship. Yeah, that's great to hear. Just being able to expand on the whole, how it, over time it's been more evolving where instead of you receiving cash donations and paper money, now it's being able to say, the next transition was being able to take debit cards or credit card donations. And then now it's progressing more and more to being crypto and all these other digital formats. Yeah, it's the evolution of fundraising. So it is kind of being, it's exciting to be on the forefront of that, just to see where that goes. Heck yeah, that's awesome. I think one of the other things that crypto is doing is, is a lot of the people that have uh, been involved in crypto have not been like super philanthropy minded. And crypto is reminding people that, you know, you can donate, you can make a difference. Um, and, and changing the way a lot of people are thinking about um, nonprofits and charity and being a philanthropist and changing the world in a lot of other ways, even through cryptocurrency. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So that's that. Go ahead. Oh, I'm, I guess another question would be pretty much what really funds the rescue? And then what do you use all those donations for? Like, what is, what is the main driver behind fundraising for you guys? Well, I, most of our money comes from donors such as yourself. And um, our biggest uh, budget budgetary need and uh, the line in our budget programming is our veterinary costs. Um, a lot of these older dogs come from situations where they weren't cared for a lot. Um, some and, and some of them need extensive surgeries when they get to us. Um, we've done surgeries where we have removed every single tooth in a, in a dog's mouth and, and repaired jaws. A lot of start brushing his her teeth now because mm -hmm. I'm telling you what we see, especially in Pomeranians. I have two Pomeranians here. None of them, both of them, have no teeth at all. So rotten teeth, broken jaws. We get dogs with that have mammary tumors and uh, other kinds of tumors. And, and um, we can do all that. We can take care of them because nobody wants to adopt a dog and then drop you know $3,000 on a dental surgery. So all of those things we do prior to adopting out a dog to make that dog more adoptable. So, um, so donations go a lot just directly to our veterinary care. Um, we're also in, we just bought a brand new building and we're building our forever home. It's a campus of three buildings and uh, we are going to have a community space and a vet clinic and, and of course, lots of wonder, wonderful space for all the dogs to be with no, no kennels or cages. Um, so your donations <laughs> can't come, they come at a very, very great time for us because we are in the process of really growing our our program at pro programming being able to take dogs from you know hoarding situations and and fires you know out out here in the bay area um there have been a lot of fires in the past years so we try and be, we're trying to make sure that no animal slips you know between the cracks so that we can help as many as we can and, and so donations are really just helping us to ramp up and be able to say yes to even more dogs in danger and humans. Oh yeah, and to, to kind of put it into scale, so like the average dog that comes to Muttville probably hasn't seen a veterinarian in years or ever. There's been a lot of neglect. Uh, many of them need grooming, extensive grooming just to relieve their discomfort because of the matting and possibly foxtails and whatnot. But like on average, we invest about $1,600 for every dog that we save. So, and we'll save over a thousand dogs every year. So when you think about that, uh, you know, the, the veterinary expense is not surprising how that's our biggest uh, line item in our budget. So then how do you ultimately find their forever home? when they're going into that new secondary transition, going um, from being at the shelter and then now moving into their forever home? Sure, you know, we have, we, we actually have uh, adoption matchmakers 
that uh, work with each and every applicant and uh, we assess every dog and every dog's different for what kind of home will be best for them. And we do a lot of social media. We have an incredible website that um, has a picture and a bit of information, a bio for each dog that's available for adoption. So you can really go there, look at the photos, read about the dog. Um, you, you then apply, you know, you fill out the application and then we go to the adoption concierge and matchmakers that then help matchmake. So um, it's, a, it's a nice process because you get to really think about what you want in each and every, you know, like, what are your expectations? Do you want a dog that's gonna hike, you know, miles and miles with you every day? Or do you want a dog that is gonna be a couch potato and just watch Netflix all night? Um, or do you want both? You want a little of both? We have those too. So we have everything. We have seven-year-olds that can go on 10-mile hikes. And we also have- like this guy. Yeah, and we have, we have other dogs that, uh, you know, really, they might be seven, but they're really lazy and couch potatoes. So they just want to walk around the block and then they want to come home and they want to watch, you know, whatever you're watching. I won't go into that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we all have our things we're watching. But, uh, you know- I think there's a, for every single dog, there is a home for every dog that we get. You know, some of them might take a little longer. Some are pretty shy. Some are outgoing. Some, some love children. Some would prefer, you know, a senior citizen. So uh, we try and make that match. I think that's what's really important is, is finding the right dog for the right home so that we set them up to succeed and get and lots and lots of love along the way. Yeah. And one thing that Sherry mentioned earlier, kind of like making seniors sexy, uh, it's true because um, like the average dog, uh, before they got to Muttville, they may have been in a shelter for months, just languishing, waiting to find a home. The average dog, when they get to Muttville, they'll find a home in less than 30 days, which is just unbelievable in my opinion. It's yeah. so fast. And um, it, I mean, the sooner the dog gets a home, the happier it is and the happier the family is. So it's really fantastic. She found a home in 24 hours. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them find homes literally within 24 to 48 hours, and some take up to maybe a month and a half. But, you know, we, I think we've attracted a lot of people that want dogs and know that we're going to really try and make a match for them rather than just, hey, this dog, take this dog. It's more, it's a lot more involved and they want to really make everybody happy. And one of the great things about a senior dog, especially from my perspective, is I'm terrible about disciplining a dog or trying to train a dog. So that's kind of carte blanche for me to spoil the dog and do everything possible to make his or her <laughs> life just fantastic. And, and I don't feel guilty because I know, hey, what do they got, five, six, seven years left? Uh, you know, either way, it's, it's, it's great for the dog and great for me because I don't have that kind of skill set. Yeah. <laughs> I, want awesome. to know how, I want to know how, how it uh what is it a, a palm and a husky managed to mate that's a pretty um interesting combination yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the cool. after hour show sherry <laughs> no, no kidding uh, as far as luna's case goes this little pomeranian husky that i have right now her mom is a husky and then her dad was a pomeranian Oh my God, that's yeah, so, crazy. And she was probably the smallest one in her whole litter. I want to say that her litter was nine other pups. So she, she is the smallest one. She takes mostly after the whole Pomeranian side, but then has those deep blue eyes that pretty much just showcase that she is still that husky. Oh, she is just something, isn't she? <laughs> wow. She looks like a little wolf. <laughs> really and does. She gets her mane and then looks more and more Pomeranian as her hair grows out. But it's just way too hot here in Houston right now to have that full coat of hair. We try and keep her nice and trimmed down. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you guys, where do you live? So for me personally, right now I'm living in Houston, but then it's pegging back and forth a little bit between the West Coast and Oregon and then also down in Miami, Florida area. So. It's, yeah, it's probably better to keep her trimmed down or keep her cooler. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm in, um, I'm in Oregon right currently. So 
<laughs> We're all getting the drought this year. Zach, where are you? You're in a car. You're uh, muted, Zach. <laughs> I'm I'm actually up in Canada. It's uh, surprisingly warm here today, so that's kind of nice. Nice. Are you on the East Coast or the West Coast? I'm on the West Coast. Oh, awesome. I love right. uh, BC. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm kind of right in the mountains uh, in Alberta, so we're about 45 oh. minutes from the mountains. Beautiful. Lovely. Awesome. Yeah. So, Zach, do you have any questions for us? Um, no, I love listening to everybody. Um, you know, I've always been a dog person, and I grew up on a farm. We always had, like, three or four dogs, and um, my ex-girlfriend actually had a palm ski, so um, it's kind of kind of funny to, to be partnering up with you guys. But, um, no, I'm just, just really happy to be here. Yeah, it's crazy. Do you, do you currently have any dogs right now, Zach? Uh, no dogs for me right now. I've been traveling all over the world lately, playing hockey in Russia and Switzerland and uh, most recently Germany. So I don't quite have uh, time to, to take care of a dog and, and take it around. No. Well, Zach, we can hook you up when you're ready to get a dog. <laughs> Sounds good. How, how long have you uh, been involved in crypto, Zach? Only about three weeks. Yeah, I, I'm basically brand new. Kind of right when the big crash happened, I, I got in right after that. So, so we hit, we we uh, contact you at the per perfect time, huh? <laughs> yeah, you did for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Then we wanted to be able to change the table, if you will, to open it up for Sherry as well as Eric to ask us any questions about what you might find interesting about a project or anything else. We're open to answer all the questions you might have. Well, um, if I can ask, like, how did you find Mutball in the first place? You know, you guys are Houston, up in Oregon, Zach's in Canada, and here we are in San Francisco. How did you guys uh, find our, our little organization, our happy place? Yeah. <laughs> So being able to expand on that a little bit more would be pretty much the way that we really went through our whole donation process for this token is we open it up to the community and ask them what category do we want to be able to make a charitable donation to. So for this original poll, it was focused around dog related charities, human empowerment, welfare, mental health, as well as very much education. So those are the big different categories that we had. And then we opened that up to our community and they voted on dog charities to be the primary charity that we make this first donation to. From there, we did a good amount of research as well as pulling into the community that we have and asking them what are the different charities that are dog related that we should take a look at as well as put those onto the next poll and say, who's gonna be that winner? So you're one of the four, one of the four lucky charities that were able to make it onto that poll. And pretty much from there, we just let the whole community decide who, who's our first donation going to go to. Well, we are incredibly fortunate and appreciative. So thank you guys so much. Uh, it really makes a huge difference for these dogs and just our community, just the momentum. Anything about saving dogs is very powerful. So thank you. We love the partnership. Crypto, dogs, I don't know. There's just something really special about that. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it, it probably is a very interesting time in crypto as a whole, where you have a whole bunch of different projects that are all being focused in around the different breeds of dogs and all the different variations that anybody can think of. And, you know, seeing all that, I wanted to be able to make one with the inspiration of Luna right here, where been with her for over a year and a half and just saying why not make a token that's all based about her and see why can't we do something good for society as a whole really oh. focusing in on the charitable aspect there that's such go. a great idea oh there's oh. another one of that's a palm <laughs> that's a palm 
That's a 19 year old palm. You got a lot of years left, Luna. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, it's so great to be able to take care of these old dogs because they've been just a real godsend for us in the last year where we've all been trapped in our homes and just not being able to see our friends and family. And they've just been such wonderful companions and dogs are always there for us. They don't care if you're rich or poor, but they just want to be with you. And uh, it's great to be able to find a way to pay it back and save more of them because they're so loyal and so much fun to have. <laughs> Yeah, no, no doubt about that one where pretty much wherever you're going in the house they're always going to be there right next to your side they're always going to have like that interest in seeing what are you doing are you making some food and I'm going to grab a snack as well <laughs> there's no boundaries with this guy <laughs> bathroom kitchen wherever pillow on, on my bed yeah. i like to say they even like my singing and nobody else would like my singing but my dogs love it. Well, most of them are deaf, Sherry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I do have a lot of deaf dogs here. I take a lot of times, um, I take the, uh, at my house, they like to take the dogs that are in hospice care. So dogs that, you know, have terminal illnesses and Muttville, we adopt those dogs out. So we don't, if they still feel good, dogs don't always know they're sick, you know? So we started a program where we actually adopt out dogs that are um, that have terminal illnesses but still have a really good quality of life. And um, those are the ones I like to take home, the ones where you get to give them their, I, I call it a bucket list. So we do everything, go to the beach, go through, drive through McDonald's. We do everything that they want to do, you know, and sometimes it's, you know, it might be for a month or so and others live quite a long time because once they start getting a lot of love and really good food, then they end up deciding that they're not sick anymore. They're gonna stick around. So um, the dogs that I bring home are usually those dogs that um, need that extra special. So I have a 19 year old Pomeranian, but he still wants to play with his little squirrel. <laughs> Just that he sleeps really hard. <laughs> play five minutes sleep one hour but I like I, that ratio I you know what if I got if, if when I get old please people just let me play for for you know 10 minutes and let me sleep for an hour and I'll do that forever <laughs> that's great to hear and from which like every single dog has their own different preference as well like I know when Lynn was growing up it was let me just run around the house real fast and then just fall asleep right in spot and then wake up, burst of energy for a good five minutes and then just go right back to taking a nap. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. So it was great being able to speak with everybody and how much we want to ask you back if you had any questions that you want to ask us about the team. Sorry. Um, yeah, I've, uh, no, I'm just kind of taking it all in over here. Um, I think it's great what you guys do. And I'm um, really happy to, to come on this call today. It's kind of kind of crazy. I last minute launched my own coin today. So I'm kind of looking back and forth out a little bit. And there's this guy telling me to do marketing. So I'm really sorry if I uh, I'm not fully uh, in in the loop here, but um, no, this is this is great. Well, we thank you, Zach. Thank all of you guys for your donations. It's, you know, God, it's so cool. We love our crypto. <laughs> it's just really cool that you guys are you know doing some philanthropy around around crypto. I think it's God. It's it, it wasn't expected, and we're we love to be a part of it. Really. And then being able yeah. to expand on that a little bit more is we, we are proud to announce that this first donation that the full Tomsky team was able to do is for $15,000 USD equivalent. So that has been 100% submitted and should be in your guys' account right now. So we're proud wow. to that. Okay, that's life-saving. That's <laughs> life-changing for a lot of dogs, Amazing. guys. That's incredible. Seriously. Thank you. Banjo says thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, thank you for uh, putting yourself on the crypto side. <laughs> yeah. It's our pleasure. <laughs> and, and if you guys come to San Francisco, you, you have to come visit because Muttville is the happy place. It's right. really happy to come visit. It's not a sad place. There's lots of dogs. Everybody's wagging their tails. Yeah, no cages. It's uh, like Disneyland for dogs. So it's yeah. just going to be happy. Come on by. We love to show people around. And uh, I, I could never visit a shelter as a kid. I would get too depressed. But like this, I love, I love it. It just makes me smile. When you see dogs on top of desks and someone's trying to type and be on a computer, it's like, no, no, you got to love me. It's, uh, it's hilarious because the dogs take priority. Right. I might take you up on that. I'm making a trip down south. And I'm driving all the way soon, so I might just come through to uh, California. Absolutely. Hit us up. <laughs> Most right. definitely. Well, we want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be able to join us on this call. Thank you for everybody over at Mudville, Sherry, and Eric. As thank well as we want to thank our host, Zach, for joining us on this call. And so much for being able to give his perspective on crypto and then him just being able to jump piece first into it all so sherry and eric where are we able to find out more information about your guys's wonderful organization oh it's real simple just muttville.org and actually coinciding i'm wearing the shirt today so m-u-t-t-v-i-l-l-e dot o-r-g you can uh, check us out and see all our lovely dogs and kind of our impact in the community and all the happy families and lives that we're creating yeah and then is there any social media profiles that you want to be able to shout out here right now go ahead oh we I, I, <laughs> yeah we've got I don't the, know what all the handles are yeah we've got the the twitter the linkedin or linkedin instagram and uh facebook um uh, just mutt the last uh and that, that's how you'll find us but thank you for uh, the shout out and uh next time i'll remember to remember those you are I'm really happy photos and stories on insta so go to our instagram Awesome. And then once again, we want to be able to thank Zach. Uh, do you mind shouting out your Twitter or where we're able to find you at as well? Yeah, so I'm pretty much all my socials are the same. It's just at Zach Boychuk. It's for YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, kind of everything. So um, Great. that's it. <laughs> Simple. Simple. Oh, by the way, we have a we have a large YouTube library as well. And um with a lot of really fun stories about dogs and success stories about a lot of our dogs, befores and afters, all sorts of things. So check that out. Yeah, if you want a good smile, go check it out. It, we're all about happy, happy stories, uh, none of the sad stuff, because uh, you know that, that's there's enough of that in the world. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. So once again, thank you for taking the time out of your day to hop on this call with us. And once again, we're the Promsky team. And you're able to find us on pretty much all social media at Promsky. So that's going to be P O M. And then that's our real big one is going to be Twitter, which is at Promsky with an E added in between the Y. Great. We that's will perfect. be able to Thank you for having us and thank you for your really wonderful donation. That's just amazing. Really, thank yeah. you so much. You are saving lives without a doubt. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> All right, y'all. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Be well. Bye. Bye.